songwriting time Where we learn to combine Melody and harmony Rhythm and rhyme So come on, let's go It's a songwriting show For course code MUS310 Hey, welcome back to the songwriting show. Today we are going to talk about chord substitutions, ways that you can spice up the harmony of your song. Now we've already talked about chord extensions, about adding notes to the chords that you have in your song to add interest, to add color. Uh, but I wanna to talk today about chord substitutions, about completely changing the, uh, the chord that you're that you're playing in order to add interest to your harmonic progression. So uh, we'll work in the key of C today. And let's start off with a simple chord progression. You just play in the one chord and the four chord. So you're just playing C and then F. And let's just say you've got two bars of C and then a couple bars of F and that's your progression. Well, the simplest uh, sort of first order chord progression that you can use is that when you have a major chord you can substitute the relative minor of that chord so for the for the one chord for C you could substitute a minor and it works uh, particularly well if you if you substitute the seventh chord uh, because the relative minor chord of a major is just the major triad with the relative minor in the bass note. So you can even see it here on uh, on the guitar if you play the guitar. Here's a C chord and here's an A minor 7 chord. I just basically changed the uh, the bass note from C to A. So let, let's, uh, let's listen to what that sounds like. So you've got your chord progression which is just two bars of C, two bars of F, two bars of C, Let's try the A minor 7. So you see how that, that's uh, just a different color, a different sound. It adds some interest to the chord progression. Whereas if you just play the same two chords, say for your entire verse or for the entire chorus or the entire song, that gets pretty monotonous. And so just substituting the relative minor is a way that you can uh, add some interest, add a different kind of harmonic movement to your song. Uh, we can do it with the four chord too. So we can do, uh, so let's see, um, start on the C, the F, here's the C again. Now let's go to the D minor seven. So it had a little bit different of a flavor to it. That's another thing that you can do. Likewise, if your chord uh, progression has a minor chord you can substitute the relative major for that and it'll func the functionally the chord will function the same way in terms of the harmonic progression for the most part uh, but uh, it gives it just a different movement in the bass uh, different movement harmonically add some interest uh, and break up the monotony if you're repeating a, uh, a simple chord progression over and over so that's number one the first thing that you can do is uh, just substitute the relative major or the relative minor. Now, the, the second thing that you can do is you can play some alternate cadences. Now, in terms of reharmonizing a melody, we are not gonna go into a deep dive of all the ways that you can reharmonize a melody and use different chords. This is just going right to the back of the book and checking the answers. I'm just giving you some ideas for some alternate chord progressions. And these are actually in your textbook. Remember the textbook? Uh, page 39 has, um, has alternate uh, uh, chord progressions, alternate cadences. Now, remember we talked about sort of basic functional harmony that some music tends to go from a tonic to a subdominant, which would be the four or the two chord, and then to a dominant, and then back to the um, back to the tonic. So these are um, these alternate cadences are ways for you to get from uh, subdominant to a dominant sound, to resolving back to the tonic. So basically, these are alternate paths to resolve you back to your tonic. So let's say our our basic. Uh, 
tonic mm. sub uh, dominant dominant back to the tonic would be um, C F G and then back to C so that just sounds like this <laughs> It works, very vanilla, kind of boring. So let's try some alternate paths to get back to the tonic, to get back to C. So uh, the first one is we're gonna play an A flat major, and then a G major, and then the C. So it sounds like we'll start with the C, then the A flat, then the G, and the C. So that has an interesting sound to it now certainly the a flat there's a lot of tension there and moving it a semitone sort of uh resolves that resolves that to the g and then we bring it home to the c so another one uh is uh and these are uh parallel motion like this a flat chord just all the notes move together a semitone down to the g and then that resolves and so that parallel motion, sort of, there's a logic to it that our ear accepts. That's kind of why it works. So another one, we could play the minor third uh, major chord. So uh, for C, that'd be the E flat major, and then F major. So there's a parallel motion up a full step, and then back to the C. So that sounds like this. C, and then E flat. So that parallel motion uh, is a is a way that we can get from a sort of subdominant to dominant feel back to the um, back to the tonic. Uh, so here's uh, here's another one in the book. It's A minor, G, and then C. So we're using an A minor sort of as the subdominant sound uh, function, and then it, the G is the dominant back to the C. So that sounds like this. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have, uh, when you play a chord like A flat, uh, there's all sorts of notes in that that are outside the key of C, so you get it's pretty crunchy sounding, lots of tension there. Uh, the A minor, the G, C, all those chords are in the key of C, so you don't get the same amount of tension. But sometimes you don't want a whole lot of tension or you, or you don't want a rich a harmonic sound because it doesn't fit the mood of your song. So here's, uh, here's another, uh, uh, chord substitution cadence that you can use. This is called the tritone substitution uh, because we are substituting for the dominant chord, we are substituting a chord that is a tritone interval away. So um, we're going to go from D minor to D flat to C. Now the D flat, that's a tritone away from G. G would be the dominant C, but we're going to play a D flat instead. So it sounds like this. D flat, C. So these are other things that you can try. If you try that one with seventh chords, it has a really jazzy sound. So. So if that fits the mood of your song, you can use that tritone substitution. Uh, and the last one that the book has is going from C to E minor to D minor to C. So a couple of minor chords as cadential chords to get us back to the C. Let's listen to that. So. so that has its own flavor, and that could work with your song. Now, of course, you need to make sure that these chord uh, changes, that these chord substitutions are going to be compatible with your melody for them to work. Or you could just start with one of these cool uh, cadences with chord substitutions and build your song around that, that cadence. And you could use something that sounds really crunchy like that A flat to the G to the C. And just build your melody around the chord tones in, those, uh, in, those, in that progression. Now, one final way that we can use chord substitutions man i am really trying not to say um or uh and you could i was like choking on the uhs in that last sentence trying to get better there's another one i really wanted to say uh there but i held it back for you guys because i love you so i did it again 
what was I talking about now? Oh, secondary dominance. So we can, subs we can add to our chord progression the dominant chord of a chord that we are moving to. So for, inst for instance, we, we know that a dominant seventh chord resolves up a fourth or down a fifth, whichever direction you want to go. So in our key of C, the, the G7 chord, that resolves up a fourth to the C. Well, if our progression it goes from C to F, we can add a dominant seventh chord on the F, which would, uh, uh, the dominant seven of the F to resolve up to it. And that happens to be C, because C is a fourth below F. So you have heard this in country songs and in gospel songs all the time. So it sounds like this, we're on our C, then we play the C7, then we go up to the F. So that's something that that we can do when we're going up to the fourth we just create we just add the dominant seventh uh, extension to our one chord and it creates a little more urgency to that motion up to the fourth now it has a certain flavor to it it sounds kind of old-timey and you don't hear it a lot in certainly contemporary worship music and contemporary pop music it's has sort of fallen out of fashion but it is an option for you now you can use this to really spice up the harmony of a simple song. So let's take, for instance, let's take Happy Birthday. Do it in the key of G. Happy birthday to you. The next chord is the five chord, the D. So we can add a secondary dominant to our progression to get us to the D. So the secondary dominant of, of D would be A7. So we can throw that in before the D chord. It, it would sound like this. We start with the G. Happy birthday to you. So we add that other chord in there and it spices up the harmony. Now, again, this technique was used a lot a long time ago. It's not used so much anymore. Harmony is pretty sparse, pretty clean uh, and simple in most songwriting uh, that in contemporary genres today, but this is an option and it can be used quite effectively. Now you can also use, uh, you can substitute any dominant chord for the two, five, one cadence. So the A to the D, that's a five, one cadence. We can add the two of the, 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 chord we're resolving to, which in this case is D. So we can add the two, which is an E minor, seven, and then the A seven, and then to the D. So then the chord progression becomes, let's see if I can do this uh, so it makes sense. Happy birthday to you. I think I screwed up the chord there. Happy birthday to you. So that we've taken a very simple chord progression. We've added, using secondary dominance, we've added some more chords and made it quite a bit more interesting. This technique is used a lot in gospel music. So for instance, let's look at the, um, the chorus of How Great Is Our God. We'll do it in G. So it just goes, How great is our God, sing with me. How great is our God, and all will see how So if we want to use secondary dominance to get to, we start on G, and then we can use a secondary dominant to get to the E chord, the E minor chord, sorry, and then we can use a secondary dominant to get to the C chord. And let's get really fancy. Let's not just do the dominant. Let's do the two, five, one into those chords. So then uh, here's how, and we're doing a minor two, five, one into the E minor. It sounds like this. How great our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. So I also did a 2-5 into the C. So I did a D minor 7, G7 into the C. So the whole progression, which was really simple and clean, 
Now we sort of gospel it up with these secondary dominants. So here it is again. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. So again, secondary dominance, a great way to spice up, add a little more urgency to your harmony. I will uh, put a worksheet up on Canvas that explains, that has these progressions for you so you can follow along and play, play around with them and insert them into your songs if you want that little extra harmonic uh, boost in the interest of your chord progression. Try these, these chord substitutions throw in a secondary dominant, see what happens, play around with it, and it's a great tool for you to have as a songwriter. Now for today's uh, Easter egg, for today's little cookie, I'm gonna give you some clips from a video birthday card that my boys and I made for their grandma uh, about 10 years ago. And I had the boys dress up like little businessmen and have little businessmen conversations over breakfast. Check it out. Of course, you can imagine that getting a, a nine-year-old to execute the comedy classic spit take took some doing. So here are some of the failed attempts at the spit take. Enjoy. Hey. 